Cool. Thanks for answering my uh, unquestioned question. Does that kind of answer your question? <laughs> yeah, it does, because I was trying to come up with something around that lines, but, you know, whatever. It was last minute, so thanks for <laughs> uh, I'm glad you got it, Sarah, because I couldn't follow that for uh, at all. I kind of uh, made good. something up, you know, in terms of what I thought the question might have been heading towards, so. Oh, yeah, definitely a, a good uh, <laughs> guesstimate there, because I, I would have just probably said pass. But, uh... <laughs> But, uh, so uh, passing on to Evan, that is, shoot. Yeah, t- Tim said earlier that y- you did have a fight uh, set by Strike Force. Any word on uh, when we'll see you next time fighting for Strike Force and any news on an opponent? Uh, as I said, I'm hoping January is when I've been told, um, just not when in January. So it would be nice to solidify that because beginning of January versus end of January makes a big difference for training camps. As of right now, I'm just pretty much starting as if I'm fighting, you know, around the beginning, mid of January, and hoping that, you know, my my training will will peak at the right time, and I'll be ready for whoever and whenever they decide that I'm going to be fighting for them. Nice. Right, so I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, hopefully we can see you in January because. There is a, a rumored car, for, from what I've heard from MMA news outlets, that uh, Strike Force is going to Miami in January. So hopefully we'll see you on that car. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> yeah, as are we. Uh, we're looking forward to that. But uh, you mentioned that you would rather just get in there right away with the uh, the five round fight, and uh, I think you're you're clearly uh, Strike Force's top 135 pound woman. Um, you beat Thank up you. Misha Misha Tate and uh, Shayna Baszler pretty well. And uh, those are two incredibly tough names in that division. So um, uh, I'll ask you this: you know, who would I guess be the your dream opponent to look across the cage at if you're going to fight for that title? Um, Strike Force well, I had. Mean, uh, technically, uh, go ahead. I'm ranked number two in 135 pounds, and Tara La Rosa has the number one ranking. But she's been fighting down at 125. So you know, I don't know if she's planning on coming up, but if she's not, then I want that number one spot. Yeah, I would uh, personally. I would love to see uh, you fight Tara La Rosa. I think that'd be a great fight, and uh, I'd love to see you beat her up because she said some, uh, some. I don't know. I just don't get a good, uh, good vibe from Tara La Rosa. She seems kind of arrogant. I'd like to to see her take down a a peg or two, and I think you'd be. A, I mean, a good I'd shoot. I'd like to fight her, and I would definitely, you know, do everything I could to give her a good beat down. But she really is a sweet person, you know. Aside from the whole Jersey attitude she has going on. And she can't be on time for anything. I tried to get her to move one day, you know, get somewhere on time. We were like an hour late. But she 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 comes across a little bit more harsh than she really is. All right. Well, well, that's good. Definitely want to give her the benefit of the doubt. But um, uh, another op- opponent that I thought would be nice. Obviously, she's coming off a loss. She uh, fought up a weight class at the uh, the last Strike Force card, and that's Roxanne Modafferi. Um, yeah, she I'd be all over sh- that. That'd be a great yeah, fight. She- yeah, I, as soon as she came in to strike for us, I'm like, wow, I mean, Marlos will probably win that fight, but when she goes down to 35, I'd love to see her fight Sarah. So, Yeah, hopefully strike for us will keep her around. I mean, it's I think it's hard for Roxanne because she comes all the way from Japan. So to have right. strike force pay to bring in an American fighter from Japan, I think is a hard thing for Roxanne right now. Hopefully with her, you know, jumping on in a plane and fighting on nine days notice from Japan up in weight, Strike Force will keep her around and bring her back and throw her in the 135 pound mix. Yeah, that makes uh, that makes two of us there. So, uh, <laughs> a- a- AJ, can you uh, can you ramble off another question or? <laughs> ha ha! Very funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got I got a interesting question. I hope it's pretty good. Um, but um, I was actually thinking, you know, the UFC has had a lot of catchweight bouts, catchweight fights, and, and they sort of created like a super fight. Uh, the last one I could think of was uh, Dan Henderson and Rich Franklin. So I'll ask you this. Uh, do you, are you interested in a fight, a catchweight fight, if they had you to fight, a, I don't know, like a Gina Carano or, or a Cyborg or something? That, where they can... I definitely think that's something to consider in the future. At this point, my main goal is to get a title at 135. I think once I do that, that'll open a lot of other avenues for me, as opposed to going up and wait and doing those super fights. I'd really like to establish myself at 135 pounds as much as I can, 
and then look at some other opportunities from that point. But so in the future, yes. All right, cool. Fair enough. <laughs> well, uh, I don't I don't mean to cut in front of Evan, but I, I, I had to ask this question. I just came up with it. Do you get sick of people confusing you and thinking that you're a 145-pound women's fighter and keep asking you when you're going to fight Cyborg? It's probably the most common question I get is <laughs> either when are you going to fight Cyborg or when are you going to fight Gina Carano. Even people, you know, in Victoria or people I'm working out at the gym with, they'll ask the same thing. And, uh, I mean, it's one of those things where women's MMA is starting to really get some exposure, but the people who have had the most exposure so far have been Chris Cyborg and Gina Carano. So I don't blame people. I mean, I'm happy that they're fans of female fighting and they at least know a couple names. And, and I just hope that I'm able to make as much of an impact or close to or some impact as they've made so that people actually know my name and it's going to be, okay, well, are you going to fight Sarah Kaufman as opposed to, hey, Sarah, are you going to fight all these other people? So, that, that, I mean, that's my main goal, I would say. So um, I'm going to write down yes here <laughs> in regards <laughs> to the Kind of irritating. <laughs> I can imagine. I, I see some of the, the tweets that you respond. I think that's what it's called now. Um, yeah, that, that whole to thing is confusing. I don't understand the whole Twitter tweeting language all those little nuances. I mean, I just, I, I joined because I got my website up, and, you know, it's just another way to interact with some of the other fans, but, well, oh, it's confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's not twat like Tim called it, so we, we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can get into some trouble with that stuff, but, um, yeah, I just, I saw some of the things they replied to, and it seems like every other day there's someone asking, hey, when are you going to fight Cyborg on CBS or something? So I figured I'd ask, but, uh, uh, I'll kick it over to Evan now and uh, give him a shot. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I'm running out of questions too, like AJ, but uh, I will. Uh, I kind of just made this one up because I always ask fighters that we've had on the show previous what they think about an upcoming fight uh, that you know that's at the time and, and next big fight, so to say, is Diego Sanchez and BJ Penn. Uh, any prediction on that fight or, or your thoughts on, on the fight between those two uh, guys? I love BJ Penn. He's probably one of my favorite fighters, if not my favorite fighter. So I have to go with BJ. Um, you know, Diego at 155, he's a force. And he's kind of crazy, it seems. So he has that edge for sure. But I really think BJ is just technically he is superior in so many ways that if BJ comes to fight, um, and if he's in shape, it should be an awesome fight, and I'm rooting for BJ to win. I would tend to agree. BJ is one of my favorite fighters, and I'm not the biggest Diego Sanchez fan. I think he's yeah, got a little spitting uh, spitting when he came out last, you know, the last couple times. That's a lot yeah. of saliva going on. <laughs> yeah, I would. Uh, definitely not the most appealing thing to look at, but uh, yeah. But uh, last question here. We'll, we'll, we'll let you get out. Um, if where do you? I'll just put it simple. No uh, big lead up or anything. Where do you see women's MMA in five years? In five years, I hope to see women's MMA regularly on major shows. Um, you know, kind of across the world, whether it be in Europe and in North America. I mean, I think it would be great to see it widespread and to have recognizable women's title holders that are defending those belts and that fans can see and and get into it. That's ultimately what I'd. Love to see happen within five years. Good answer. Good answer. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I did a little curtsy, but you couldn't see it because I'm on the phone. So. <laughs> well, we'll imagine it. But uh, thank you. Uh, like AJ said, you are our first uh, female MMA fighter on the show. So uh, thanks a lot for coming on, and uh, hopefully we can get you on again after uh, your next victory. Awesome. Um, and and also, if anyone wants to kind of keep updated with what I'm doing, well, I'm on Twitter as well now under MMA Sarah, but also I've started a new website that I'm trying to update pretty much daily with blogs of what's going on. So it's just sarahkaufman.ca. All right. We'll definitely go check that out. Thank you uh, very much for coming on the show, Sarah, and uh, hopefully we can have it on again, like I said, the uh, lovely and talented Sarah Kaufman, everybody. Give it Thank up. Thank you so much. All right. Take it easy. Bye. Bye-bye.